Karma has arrived. Major U.S. news publication is calling out Meghan and Harry for not practicing what they preach. In other words, everybody is waking up to the fact that they are a couple of hypocrites. It's about time. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the King YouTube channel. The article I want to talk about with you in this video right now comes to us from Newsweek. Usually, Newsweek is a Sussex-friendly publication. Typically, they love publishing these puff pieces talking about how great and wonderful the Duke and Duchess of Hypocrisy are. But it sounds like even they are waking up to the fact that they're just unlikable people. There is no need to publish these glowing puff pieces. Nobody believes that BS. So the title of the article is absolutely perfect. Prince Harry and Meghan aren't practicing what they preach. Well, yeah, I'd say that's an understatement. This is a couple who I've been amazed by, honestly, because I didn't know that anybody could be so incredibly hypocritical in every single area. For example, they tell us we've got to get our carbon footprint under control. We have got to do something to help our planet. But at the same time, they're more than happy to fly around in private jets whenever they get the opportunity. Another example would be they claim that they really care about family. Family is so important to them. But look at what they've done to their own families, trashed them, insulted them, thrown them under the bus. They are alienated from both their families at this point. And let's see what else there is. Oh, they claim to be these loving parents, but they never spend any time with their invisible children. We're still not convinced the children are real, but uh, at this moment, I'm not going to get into that. As Jack Royston writes for Newsweek, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have called for a more informed, fact-based, and more connected world as the debate over her royal race allegations continues. I mean, right off the bat, he's getting right into it. It's ridiculous, the fact that the two of them claim that they want to bring people together, they want to make the world a more peaceful place. But at the same time, they do everything in their power to encourage discontent. They want the problems with Harry's family to continue because it keeps their names in the headlines. We do have a word for that. It's called hypocrisy. Meghan and Harry are also the king and queen of spin. They love to manipulate the press narrative to make themselves look better. But according to this report on the work of their Archwell Foundation over the past year, they describe seeking the creation of a better, more trustworthy, and diverse information environment across all forms of media. Well, what exactly do they mean by that? Because last time I checked, there have been so many articles about the two of them that contain easily proven lies. And the articles are always so over the top. I mean, so exaggerated in their praise of Meghan and Harry that it was clearly written by their PR people or perhaps even Meghan herself. As Royston writes, this section of the 28-page document risks provoking critics who argue some of their own work as media publishers has been either misleading or partial in its account of the facts. And they have been doing this kind of thing for such a long time now. Even in their stupid docu-series that came out a year ago, Harry and Meghan, there were multiple instances in which they were intentionally misleading people. Even the lead-up to the docu-series, when they released the trailers, they were using stock footage that wasn't even of them to try to make it seem like they were so hounded by the media that they had to run away. I remember that they included this footage of a large group of photographers with long camera lenses, and we were supposed to believe they were shooting some royal event, but the truth was they were at the movie premiere of Harry Potter. It had nothing to do with Harry and Meghan. If you ask me, that certainly qualifies as the kind of disinformation Harry and Meghan claim to be fighting against. The R12 Foundation Impact Report also says we are committed to finding solutions that ensure information is trustworthy, that there is justice for those systematically undermined and disempowered, safety for those harmed, and equal representation at tables where decisions that impact all of us are made. It is rich, isn't it, coming from a couple of people who are some of the biggest purveyors in the world of untrustworthy information. We can't trust a thing that either of them says. And the nerve of those two, claiming that Archwell is seeking justice for those systemically undermined and disempowered. Oh, you mean like Harry's own family who you keep on attacking for no good reason? The royal family and the monarchy is strong, sure, but at the same time, they do not deserve to have these awful accusations made against them when there is no proof to support these accusations. In 2023, calling somebody a racist is an incredibly damaging allegation, and you better have proof to back up that claim. But Meghan and Harry don't have any proof because nothing ever happened. It's just lies as usual. 
This Newsweek article also goes all the way back to the Oprah Winfrey interview that Harry and Meghan did in 2021. And now they have the nerve to claim that they care about putting trustworthy information out there. Jack Royston recounts a conversation between Oprah and Meghan about Artificial and the titles. The truth of the situation, of course, is that Artificial was not entitled to publicly funded security or the prince title when he was born. That's because it was his great-grandmother who was the queen at the time. It was not King Charles. And the rule states that only grandchildren of the monarch receive titles upon birth. There's nothing confusing about this rule either. It's right there in black and white. It's according to the letter's patent. So for Meghan and Harry to try to claim that anything other than protocol was involved in this decision to not give Prince Artificial a prince title when he was born, well, it's not only disingenuous, it's an outright lie. Oprah asked Meghan, do you think it's because of his race when she was talking about why Artificial didn't get the prince title in automatic security? And Meghan's response was, I can give you an honest answer. <laughs> in those months when I was pregnant, all around this same time, so we have in tandem the conversation of, he won't be given security, he's not going to be given a title, and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. And then Harry did his best to put out that fire by saying the conversation was more like, what will the kids look like? But it was already too late. That allegation of racism was already made, and Megan has never been able to take that back, not that she's ever wanted to. But this is something that has been hanging over the royal family's head for years now. This is something we have assumed Meghan Markle is using as blackmail too, that she was going to release the names unless the royal family gave her what she wanted. Well, now, of course, the cat's out of the bag, so I don't think Megan has any ace card up her sleeve at this point. But still, the damage has been done. There are many people who don't know the full story. There are many people who are going to believe what they see in the headlines. All they're going to see is, oh, in this book, King Charles and Catherine were named as the members of the royal family who made racist remarks about Archie before he was born. And they're not going to investigate further. They're going to walk away with this idea that the King of Britain and the Commonwealth is racist. And that lovely Catherine, the Princess of Wales, who will one day be queen, is also racist. Harry goes along with most of Meghan's lies, but if you really have been paying attention, you can see that this lie he hasn't really gone along with the way that he did the others. The Invisible Children scam, of course, he's going to support her in that 100%. Lies about how Catherine was so mean to Meghan, well, yeah, Harry has gone along with that too. But you'll remember earlier this year, in one of the interviews that Harry did promoting his book Spare, he tried to take back the claim altogether. He said that he and Meghan never said the family was racist. Instead, they were implying some unconscious bias might exist, and the media just spun it. No, no. We all heard that interview. We know what was said. Yes, Meghan very clearly accused the royal family of being racist, and Harry sat there and allowed her to do it. I mean, sure, he made a little bit of an objection, but not enough to make a difference. It was already out there. The Montecito malcontents also did not provide the context for that conversation, which was incredibly important. There are many ways that conversation could have gone, and many of the ways are not offensive or wrong at all. For example, it could have been something as simple as King Charles wondering who Archie was going to take after, if he was going to have Harry's red hair and light skin, or if he was going to have Meghan's coloring. That is not racism. There's nothing wrong with wondering that. On the other hand, Harry and Meghan intentionally left this open so that people would assume that the king said something really horrible like, oh, well, I hope he doesn't turn out to look too black. And as Royston points out, the distinction matters in particular because countries in the Caribbean have indicated a desire to hold referenda on removing King Charles as king and face the prospect of citizens walking into polling booths, not fully understanding the nature of remarks made in the heart of the monarchy about race. Meghan at least knew exactly what she was doing with that remark. She's intentionally vague. She does this all the time. For example, let's think about when Harry and Meghan attended that Katy Perry concert. I still do not believe that they flew on the same jet as Cameron Diaz and the rest of those A-list celebrities. But reading the articles, you would get that impression. They were careful with their wording. I think it read something like Cameron Diaz and Benji Madden and the other stars and Harry and Meghan flew via private jet to the concert. But they were careful not to specifically say that they all flew together, and I'm sure there's a reason for this. Megan knows how to play these games, and she plays them all the time. And if we want to talk about lies and misinformation and just being plain mixed up, 
Well, look no further than Spare. I mean, that book contains so many exaggerated claims and stuff that was also just completely made up. According to Royston, Newsweek has also researched a number of specific claims in Harry's book that had the potential to mislead the reader. In one, an ex-press secretary to Queen Elizabeth was accused of stating that Harry and Meghan should expect no mercy after they quit the palace, which the prince suggested was the language of war. So apparently, the reality of the situation was that Dickie Arbiter had just been one of a number of people quoted in a Daily Mail story, and he didn't make any reference to no mercy that was totally made up. Harry has already made it clear that he has a very loose relationship with objective reality. In Spare, he wrote, Whatever the cause, my memory is my memory. It does what it does, <laughs> gathers and curates as it sees fit. And there's just as much truth in what I remember and how I remember it as there is in so-called objective facts. This crap is what I am so sick and tired of. I mean, it's not only Harry and Meghan. It seems to be a new thing in our world now that objective reality, oh yes, so-called objective reality, who cares about that? It's all about one's own personal subjective experience, except it's not. To most sane people, objective reality is what we care about the most. We don't care about your subjective memory. I mean, your memory changes things and you see no problem with that. You think that it's okay to tell this stuff as if it really happened when even you admit that your memory is unreliable? What is this world coming to? My God. Anyway, so back to this no mercy quote. According to Royston, the quote was actually attributed to different commentator Trevor Phillips, who didn't even work for the Queen, and he was offering an argument about how conservatives and progressives may both end up turning on Meghan and Harry. Phillips said, quote, They can expect no mercy from those who like things just as they are. And to be honest, they'll get short shrift from the many activists who have endured a lifetime of calumny from the media, largely without complaint. So I guess that's one of those so-called objective facts that Harry tells us we shouldn't care about. His truth is so much more important. Harry also talks a lot about his mother's tragic car crash back in 1997. And the way he understands that event is quite frankly disturbing. I understand it was an incredibly traumatic and painful event for Harry, and he has tried his best to make sense of it. But at the same time, he has got to grow up and accept what happened. He has to accept the truth is his mother got into a car with a drunk driver. The drunk driver was driving way too fast and his mother was not wearing her seatbelt. That is what happened. That is why she passed away. His family, especially his grandmother and his father, had absolutely nothing to do with the fact that his mother died. To believe these conspiracy theories is also not good for Harry. It just keeps him stuck in the past when he really needs to move on. But in spare, Harry wrote, above all, the summary conclusion that Mummy's driver was drunk and thereby the sole cause of the crash was convenient and absurd. I mean, it's not as if that incident was not investigated by both the Brits and the French, and they came to the same conclusion because there was no other conclusion to come to. But yeah, we're supposed to believe that Harry and Meghan care so much about putting the truth out there? No, they couldn't care less about the truth. They care about their truth. And in their truth, they are perfect. They've never done anything wrong. They are paragons of society who we should all admire and look up to. They should be king and queen, not that bothersome William and Catherine. So I personally am very glad that Jack Royston over at Newsweek is doing this work to expose the two of them as the hypocrites they are. There are so many different people from all walks of life who read Newsweek, and some of those people so far may have been believing Harry and Meghan's lies. So I do hope that after those people read this article, they can have a more critical approach to what Harry and Meghan claim. And you, what other examples of hypocrisy can you think of that we have seen from Harry and Meghan? Please let me know below in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to like and share it with anybody else who would appreciate it too. And don't be afraid to click the subscribe button to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in, have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back to see you all tomorrow.